Today, we're talking about the Jacksonian era and how sectionalism almost sparked civil war in the 1800s. The sectional tension of the period found a spectacular outlet in the Senate in 1829-1830 in the webster hayne debate. So what was the webster hayne debate about? Initially, the North was increasing levels of manufacturing, while the South continued to provide the raw materials. Because of this, the North supported protective tariffs while the South was against them. The North also resented westward expansion. The South saw this resent as a northern attempt to stop the spread of agriculture. In 1829, a New England senator introduced a resolution designed to curb the sale of western public lands. This flared a sectional argument within the Senate. The charismatic New England senator, Daniel Webster, against the silver-tongued southern senator, Robert Hayne. Senator Webster from Massachusetts defended New England, arguing that the Constitution made the U.S. a country of the people, not of the states. He also censured censured nullification, arguing that only the Supreme Court had the power to determine constitutionality. Otherwise, revolution would tear apart the republic. If the 24 states were allowed to do as they wished and arbitrarily deny the constitutionality of federal law, there would be no union. On the opposing side, Senator Hayne from South Carolina condemned New England's obvious disloyalty to nation during the War of 1812 and their selfish inconsistency with tariffs. He acclaimed Calhoun's nullification doctrine as the only way to preserve minority rights and argued that states should have the right to defy Congress and manage their own land sales. However, he did not advocate for total disunity as he thought the protection of Southern rights within the U.S. under the Constitution. In the end, neither speaker defeated the other. The polished, eloquent Hayne had history and economic evidence on his side, but the thunderous, passionate Webster had more common sense and appealed to the constitutional practicality. After this debate, the tension only continued to rise. In 1832, the Nullies of South Carolina nearly incited civil war due to the, their protest of the tariff instituted in the same year. The tariff of 1832 failed to appeal to any of their demands to removing the abo abominations of the tariff of 1828, taxing much-needed imports and providing little benefit to a largely industry-free South. Already enraged by previous actions, the Nullies and Unionists clashed at the state election of 1832. The Southerners feared that the tariff's popularity among New Englanders would make it permanent. After winning the state elections, Nully's delegates met in Columbia, where they declared the tariff null and void within South Carolina. The convention threatened to take South Carolina out of the Union if the Washington regime attempted to collect the customs duties by force, and even called upon the state legislature to undertake any necessary military preparations. President Jackson wanted to crush the Carolinians for their protests, but Henry Clay refused to let this happen. His compromise bill gradually reduced the tariff of 1832 by about 10 percentage points over a period of eight years. By 1842, rates would be approximately 20-25% to 25 on their, the value of dutiable goods. This compromise tariff of 1833 was favored by the South, but opposed in New England and middle, in the Middle States. At the same time, the force bill was passed, authorizing the president to use the army and navy, if necessary, to collect federal tariff duties, known as the bloody, Lo bloody bill among Carolinians. Militant citizens saw this as an opportunity to extricate themselves without the loss of face. Calhounities feared that no other southern states would spring to their support. Though South Carolina was ready to secede, turmoil from within prevented them from doing so. The Unionist minority had begun to become more active, gathering guns, organizing militia, and nailing stars and stripes to flagpoles. Fearing civil war within an invasion from without, the Columbia Convention met again and repealed the Ordinance of Nullification. In this video, we cover the Webster and Hayne debate between the New England and Southern states over the issue of the distribution of land and tariffs. Daniel Webster from Massachusetts argued that the Union was compromised of the people and should all follow the laws of federal government. Robert Hayne from South, South Carolina, on the other hand, argued that the states had the right to determine if laws were constitutional. In 1832, the Nullies nearly incited civil war because of their opposition to the tariff of 1832. Delegates declared the tariff null and void within the state of South Carolina, and threatened to secede from the Union. Henry Clay attempted to appeal to the Southerners with his Compromise Tariff of 1833, which the South favored, but the North and Middle States opposed. Finally, the Force Bill passed in 1833, also known as the Bloody Bill, caused the Unionists to begin to surge. Though still a minority, the Nullies feared that their activity would cause civil war within South Carolina, and with President Jackson's desire to invade the state, they, repeal they repealed their declaration that the Tariff of 1832 be null and void.